My name's Tom, and I'm leaving the grind behind and hitting the road in search of adventure in my custom tiny studio on wheels. Welcome to Casa Nowhere. Don't forget to subscribe. You wouldn't want to miss anything. Well, hello, Internet. I finally have a new video for you. <laughs> I swear, ever since I got to Pennsylvania, every video, it's like one of those dreams where you're running, but you don't get anywhere. <laughs> and let's just say, when I went to fire up my diesel heater for the first time, it really didn't go very well. And I am now waiting on some parts, so that video is going to have to wait. But this week, I install a cell phone booster. And this did go pretty well. I think it's pretty good. I hope you like it. So let's get right to it. Well, how's it going today? I am going to install a cell phone booster. I added that antenna for my internet and nine days out of 10, that works great. But there's some certain atmospheric conditions where every once in a while, it's super borderline for work where I get disconnected a couple times. So, I looked around and I was able to get a cell phone booster for $300. Usually they're closer to $500. This isn't the exact one I found, but there was another brand that somebody tested. It looked identical to this. And it actually, in this other person's test on YouTube, it tested better than the WeBoost, which is kind of the, the big name. Be $530 bucks for a similar system. So I'm going to set it up and hopefully it'll work. First, let me go over all the things that it came with and what I got and how the system works and we'll go from there. So the system came in this nice little case here. I got some of the stuff out of it already. So it comes with this. This is your inside antenna. It comes with two different sections of extension wire that you could use to extend either the indoor or the outdoor antenna. And there is one 10 foot wire here that has this bigger connector that has to go to the outside antenna. And then it comes with instructions. This is the Amaze Boost T1, a 12 volt power supply. This is your outside antenna. This piece here with the spring, this is what attaches to the antenna. This is the mounting bracket. And then basically the heart of the system is this this is the amplifier that actually boosts the signal for the sake of simplicity i bought myself a cigarette lighter so i'll just hook this up to my 12 volt system and plug the thing into this i got myself a painter's pole and some suction cups i'm going to suction cup mount the pole to the side of the trailer and attach that antenna to the painter's pole but first, let me give you a little rundown of how these systems work. It all starts with the outside antenna that connects to the tower. That signal gets fed through a wire to the amplifier, which then boosts the signal and sends it through another wire to a smaller inside antenna. Sounds simple enough, but these systems are always a balancing act. If the broadcast from the inside antenna is strong enough to get picked up by the outside antenna then the system will overload and the amplifier will shut itself off so you can only get a little bit of boost but sometimes that little bit of boost is all you need and now that you know how it works and you've seen the parts let's get back to it by installing the outside antenna All right, so there you have it. There is the mount on the pole. Next, I run the wire through the antenna mount. Screw the antenna on. Line up my screws here. All right, just tighten the antenna on here. This does have this spring mount. So if you were gonna mount it permanently on your vehicle and you hit something, it's got a bit of play in it. So since it comes with about 30 feet of cable that I can use for this outdoor antenna, the first place I'm gonna try and put it 
is up towards the front on this side of the trailer. You want four feet of horizontal and four feet of vertical separation. In theory, this should work. And I'm kind of hoping to not drill a hole, another hole through the roof of the trailer and just run this wire down the wall there, out through the floor of the trailer and hoping I have enough cable to make it up to the top of the pole. So we'll see what happens. For my test run, I'm just gonna run this cable through the window on the side there. But yeah, so I'm gonna put up the pole with these suction cups and let's see how that goes. Sweet, that should be perfect. Not going anywhere. And plenty high up there. I like it. All right, with the outside antenna installed, let's go into the trailer and install the power wiring, the inside antenna, and the amplifier. So first I'm gonna put some blades on here that'll connect directly to this. And this came with these four screws to mount this device. So let's get up in the cabinet. For now, this is temporary. I'm gonna run the wire from the outside antenna through the window here, hook it up to the amplifier, and we'll fire it up and see how we do. So I did forget one step. I need to disconnect the primary LTE external antenna and hook up the paddle antenna and this will be very close to the inside antenna for the cell phone booster. I'm going to do that now. I have heard conflicting things about whether they should touch or not. It seems like if they're about an inch away is the best, so that's about an inch away. Also, this thing didn't actually say how many amps it draws, but since it has a cigarette lighter plug, I went with a 10 amp fuse, since that's what a typical cigarette lighter would be. All right, let's plug it in and see what we get. Well, no lights. I don't know if that's good or bad. I might have to look at the manual. But first I'm gonna look at my phone and look at my internet router and see what my signals are. So apparently no lights is good. The lights are alarm lights. That would mean we were feeding back. So how do we do? Well, first let's start with a baseline. So with no boost, 
I had one bar of service on my cell phone and my LTE router had a RSRP of minus 110 decibels. It was showing three bars and my speed test came in at six over 0.8. After I turned on the booster, I had full bars on my cell phone, although I still couldn't get any LTE. The bars really don't mean you have good data. On the router, I had an RSRP of minus 73. That was a 37 decibel boost, which is really good. The system has a theoretical max of 50 decibels, so we're, you know, 80% of the theoretical maximum boost, so that is pretty good. That actually means that the signal was 12 times stronger because every three decibels is a doubling of the signal. This translated into a speed test of 9 over 2.65, which isn't screaming, but it is a 50% increase on the download and a three and a half times increase on the upload. Part of the discrepancy between the gain in decibels and the gain on your speed test has to do with the fact that modern LTE devices use a technology called MIMO, multiple input, multiple output. So your cell phone booster can only boost one channel where a modern LTE device connects on either two or four channels. So you have one real solid channel, but you don't have four multiple parallel connections to the tower. So you can only get so much gain out of it. One thing is it often boosts your upload quite a bit more than your download, but this should still be enough that on those days where my connection would be iffy, it should be just enough to get me over that hump and make it usable. So I'm going to call that a success. That's about what they do. It was definitely a big improvement, especially on the upload, and hopefully that will be just enough that on those days when things are just right to make my internet stink, I will be able to use it and do what I got to do. I do need to finalize the install. I'm going to run the wire down the wall back here and I have this panel back there that is where the drain for my freshwater tank is. I'll get it down in there, drill a hole through the floor of the trailer there and connect that to the outdoor antenna but it's gotten a bit dark so I'm gonna do that tomorrow but yeah happy with it glad I found it for less than you know 550 600 dollars that is for sure got a little more connection ready for when I hit the road to the west this winter just another thing I feel like before it's all said and done I'll probably have them all probably end up getting Starlink as well but trying to avoid that because that one's a little bit of a little bit of a hit on the monthly all right well that about wraps the video i do have one more pro tip for you if you are working very remotely and you have a marginal internet connection if you set up a remote machine either in the cloud or you have a machine plugged in somewhere with a landline connection you can remote into that machine and then use that machine's internet connection to do things like download files, upload files. So you could, you know, if your job involves downloading large files, editing them, and then re-uploading them, that can all happen on the remote machine that has a good internet connection. And you only need a connection that's good enough to get a remote desktop to that machine. So depending on your work, that could be a big help. If you're trying to do Zoom calls or something as part of your work, that won't help, and I'm not sure that you could actually edit video on a remote machine. I should try that, but my remote machines are not powerful enough to do that. But it's just a tip that may help you depending on what you do. So I hope you liked the video or found it helpful. Thank you for watching, and have a good one. If you made it this far, why not go ahead and hit that like button? I sure would appreciate it.